All right, today we'll be looking at our uh, tech tips, the updating of some firmware on an Arduino Wi-Fi uh, shield. And uh, many of these that have recently been shipped, uh, the firmware is no longer compatible with uh, uh, the main IDE. Um, this is an Arduino Mega that I'll be using, but the same procedure, I believe, works for the Arduino Uno. Um, so we're going to flash the firmware on this, and um, we'll be generally following the instructions that come from Arduino, uh, but with a few intermediate steps, um, I'll do my best to explain a little more clearly what worked for me. Um, I couldn't find a comprehensive step-by-step -step guide that worked for someone who's uh, unfamiliar with this. I've only done that one or two times before. Um, but after getting through it, uh, I thought it'd be helpful to explain that process. So um, most of the work will be done with screen recording, but we'll start with uh, by stepping through um, the actual uh, hardware itself. So there is one thing that needs to be done before we uh, do any work. You need to make sure you have um, a mini USB port, um, not the micro, but uh, rather the, the mini. Um, and that's what's used to plug in the uh, Wi-Fi shield when it's alone. And we'll be working with it um, not connected to the main Arduino board. Uh, so uh, first step before we do anything there is we're going to set the jumper on this board. The jumper should be on both of those posts. Then we'll put our connection using the mini USB here. And then we'll plug in our USB. So we begin with a search here for the Arduino Wi-Fi Shield upgrade, uh, firmware upgrade, and that will bring us to the Arduino website. Here we'll uh, see the instructions as provided by Arduino themselves and um, take a look at uh, what, they're, what they're suggesting because we've adapted our instructions based on this. Uh, first step is to download a DFU programmer, so that's this tool. Uh, that we're going to uh, go pick up and that uh, tool is called FLIP. So we're going to go to the website that um, includes FLIP and we'll click right there. It'll take us this is FLIP's web page where the download occurs and there's a couple different windows install. Uh, I use the one that includes the Java runtime environment um, for version 3.47. Uh, that's because I know I don't have Java installed. If you know you have Java installed, um, and you may have a later version when you go to do this, I'm sure they update it occasionally. Uh, the installer just above it is the one um, that requires the uh, Java to be installed, so it doesn't include it. It's a smaller download. Uh, but this is the one I got, this uh, 3.47, and that worked fine uh, for me. And after installing it, you can see uh, here it is, but we're actually not going to use this uh, FLIP program. Uh, we're going to use a, a uh, standalone executable, command line executable, uh, that is installed with it. Um, so we're going to uh, do that through a command shell interface. And we'll go to start. And we're also going to check to see that there's a... Um, uh, through the control panel. Now that we've plugged in our Arduino, we're going to go see uh, in the system and then device manager. And if we've uh, not yet installed um, this driver, okay, you can see it here for me, the Atmel USB devices right here. And, but if you hadn't installed, before I installed it, it showed up down here under other devices and it had the little uh, exclamation point warning um, showing that it was unknown. So uh, what we do there then would be to right click on it um, and that's going to be we'll choose update driver, browse my computer for driver, and then we're going to go into the C program files and x86 Atmel. 
The x86 is because it's a 32-bit program on a 64-bit machine. If you've got a 32-bit machine, you won't have that x86. Um, so that would be the process. And then after doing that, hitting next, and it'll go and find that driver, and you should be able to, uh, to operate um, then the USB. And that again is included um, from Atmel. So uh, thanks to them for that. And once we've got that um, set up, we're ready now to do our command shell. Close out that window. So now we'll look at what files we're going to actually use. We need to go into the directory um, coming from Arduino, our installed directory where Arduino IDE was installed. In this case it's 1.06, but um, I believe this works with 1.05. And if it's a 64-bit machine, as mine is, you get this x86, and that's where the Arduino is located. We're going to go in there, and we'll open up hardware, and then Arduino, firmware, Wi-Fi shield, binary. And then there's two files we want out of this directory, okay? And one is going to be um, here, this dnld at the top, .elf, and wifi hd.elf. So it's going to be this one here at the top on my list and the wifi hd.elf, those two files. And to make our command line simpler, I'm going to copy. So I'll right click and I'm going to head back to my computer to the C drive at the root level, and I'm going to paste it in here. Now I've already pasted these before, so when I go to paste, I say, yeah, go ahead and replace those, each one. And you need administrator uh, permissions to continue, so I'll say, okay, continue. Now we have our files where we want them in the uh, C root level directory, and that's going to simplify our command line user interface. So with our files in place and our Wi-Fi shield connected via the mini USB, We'll go ahead and start the command shell. Command shell then is going to, we're going to need to go to this. Here is the um, batch isp.exe in the atmel flip bin directory. So this again was what was installed. It's this little executable that we want to get to. It's not flip itself, but this is the one we're going to use through command shell. And these are the two commands that we use, use as the basis for it. I have um, an edited version of those, which is a little bit simpler. It doesn't have this long, this long pathway right here, um, which ended up not working. And so rather than trying to fix that, several people uh, suggested just going to the C directory. So we tried CMD, start CMD, and that'll pull this up. And now we'll uh, get to, we need to navigate to that directory where batch isp.exe is located. So I'll do cd dot dot, cd dot dot, that gives us back to the uh, root level and then cd pro and I'll hit tab and that brings up program files. So I'll hit enter or tab again to get the x86 and then cd atmel and by hitting tab it gets capitalized and everything. cd f and then tab and it'll get me flip and then I'll hit enter, and then cd bin, sorry, ls to, uh, to dir, take a look at this, and then cd bin, and now we're in the right directory, okay? And then from here, we're going to execute our, um, our command. I've copied those commands into this uh, little text file and I'll provide that in the instructions. So this is what we're going to use. And this is the file that dnld, wifi dnld.elf and then wifi hd.elf. Those are the two files that we reference here with a simple path. So I'll copy this. And once I've copied it, move over to my command shell. And then I right click. Control V does not work in a command shell. You got to right click here and say paste. Okay. And then as soon as I've got everything connected, Make sure we're good. I'll hit enter and it starts to execute. Now at this point, if you didn't have the driver, that um, that would have failed, right? The first couple things work, um, but with the driver from Atmel installed, uh, everything worked for me. I did get this one error, user program and the bootloader overlap, but it didn't seem to cause me any trouble.
So that's our first step. Now we need to execute a similar but slightly different command, which is this one, referencing the Wi-Fi HD.ELF. So we're going to copy that and paste that in here. And having um, unplugged and replugged in our um, hardware, we can go ahead. And there we'll see it's executing further and it's um, putting in 1.02 as the bootloader version. Again, the warning, but it didn't give me any trouble. So I think it's okay. And so far it's worked just fine. Once this finishes up, we'll uh, wrap up one or two things. Uh, we'll go ahead and delete those two files from our root directory. They don't need to be there. So I'll select those two and delete those. Yes, got to confirm and uh, continue uh, as administrator. Now that that's done, we can disconnect our hardware, reassemble the Wi-Fi shield to the board, and then pull in our sketch. And in this case, to test it, I pulled in uh, the um, example sketch for Wi-Fi, and uh, we'll just go ahead and choose the Wi-Fi web client example. That's a simple one to set up and test. There really isn't much editing except for putting in um, my um, machines, uh, my wireless connections, login and password. So we'll pull that in and I've already entered my login and password criteria into the header of this and we'll go ahead and upload it to the, in this case, Arduino Mega that I'm using. And once that has um, fully uploaded, there's a, about a 10 second delay and I'll do Control Shift M. Once it's uploaded here, I did Control Shift M and that'll pull up my serial window and um, it's connecting to our business Wi-Fi. And while we've got 10 seconds here, I'll make a little pitch for Monty Consulting. We're a uh, design and uh, web development services company uh, out of Michigan. And so uh, we're starting to delve a little deeper into the hardware. Now we're connected and we can see that we're receiving data from Google here. It went and asked Google for information and Google is providing it. And so we're receiving that character by character. So that confirms that our Wi-Fi shield is operating correctly. And uh, just a reminder that even with the old um, hardware, it would run to Wi-Fi, but it would not speak to the web. And so that's why we need to update our Wi-Fi shield firmware. And so that about finishes it for our work today. Uh, thanks for listening. I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, again, this comes without warranty because uh, variations in machines, drivers, different versions of Windows may not work out. Um, but um, if it's helpful, give us a shout out either on Facebook at the link below or uh, visit our website at monty.net. Thanks.